A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Sheriff Sam is a boy of ten. He busts right in the robber's den and gets his man because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios. 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 That's Cheerios, the cereal shaped like little letter O's. And those O's stand for oats. The good grain Cheerios is made from... Every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, those good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. You can see that Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So make sure you have a Cheerios breakfast every day. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Hooray! Shortly after the Civil War, a powerful European nation made plans to invade the United States. Kurt Oliver, the head of that nation's spy ring, went into the West and hired carefully chosen outlaws to aid him. One of these traitors was Ruth Barlow, killer, army deserter, and leader of an outlaw gang. Acting on orders from Europe, Oliver summoned Barlow to his Kansas hideout, three miles south of the Indian village ruled by Chief Great Eagle. Oliver said to Barlow, Roof, since the mobilization, the American Navy is practically non-existent. And the Army is on the man. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. There are hardly any soldiers out this way. They're concentrated in the East. But if the Indians start a war, those troops would be rushed here. And Roof, my country wants such a war. Uh, huh? A war? Yes. When American soldiers are moved here, our soldiers will land on the East Coast with no one to stop them. <laughs> yeah, you sure make it sound easy. It will be easy. You and your gang, plus Jim Wolfhead, start the war. How? Wolfhead knows the details. He leads you and the men to a place where half a dozen Indians, including the son of the chief, are camped. Massacre them. But how? You and several of your men use army equipment. Yeah? Leave some of it near the dead Indians. Then the army will be blamed. Uh -huh. The Indians will start the war. Hey, that's a slick plan, Oliver. After the attack room, you and another man wait near the Indian village where Wolfhead can bring you reports. Relay those reports to me. <laughs> Shortly before dawn, the sleeping Indians in the fishing camp on the shore of Lake Kanatki were wakened by the sound of horses' hoofs, but were shot at before they could defend themselves. The raiders, after dropping three pieces of military equipment, disappeared into the darkness. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. Hey. Oh, 
After riding a few miles in the general direction of Fort Manning, the outlaws changed direction and stopped at a cross. Ho, 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 ho! Get down, boys. Boys, get back to hide out and tell the boss everything went fine. Get going now before it gets light. Tell yeah. yeah. we'll go and wait for Jim Wolfhead. Come on, get up! Come on! Jim, here we are. You blind bats. They old papoose who can't see shoot better than you. Huh? What's the matter? Didn't we kill all those braves? You missed two, hit four. But only one hurt real bad. Others play possum. What about Great Eagle's son? Him one hurt bad. Well. Medicine man say, maybe him die. <laughs> well, now, I'd say that's good. The boss wants him dead. Hard great eagle act. Him sad, but him mad, too. When me show him soldier stuff and tell him me see soldier go back to Fort Manning, him say him get ready, fight him. Tell him, get back to boss and tell him that. Right. Me go back to village now, find out more. Roof, me come back later, tell you about war plans. Adios. Adios. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and Toto, returning from a mission farther west, were riding through the nearby hills, heading toward Fort Manning to visit Colonel McNaughton, the post commandant, when they saw smoke signals and reined their horses sharply. Oh, oh, oh easy, steady, big fella. Hello. Those are war signals. Ah. In the copy, then call braves to village of Great Eagle. That keeps strange. Great Eagle. Not like war. I know. His is the most peaceful tribe in the West. Ah. And Kimasabi, you save his son once. Him, blood brother. Maybe go see him, find out about war. That's what we'll do, Toto. Yes, look down below in clearance. There man down there. Look like him waiting for someone. That's a strange meeting place. Use your field glasses, Toto. I'll look through mine, too. Just a second. Toto, I recognize that man. Uh-huh. Me no face, but not remember where me see it. It was on a wanted poster in Missouri. That's Ruth Barlow. You stay here, Toto, and watch Barlow. If he moves, follow him and learn where he goes. Uh, what me do if me find out? Notify Colonel McNaughton at Fort Manning. You can ride there in two hours' time from here. Me do that, Kimasabi. After I've seen Great Eagle, I'll come here again. If you've gone, I'll know you're following Barlow. In any case, I'll see you at the fort later. Monsieur! War drums were beating when the masked man reached the village. The sentries recognized him as a blood brother of the chief and escorted him to Great Eagle's wigwam. Bitterly, the chief told of the attack, of Tawani's serious condition, and of his reasons for preparing to war against the army. He ended angrily. Colonel at Fort Manning always say him good friend of Great Eagle, but now me know him lie. Chief, Colonel McNaughton is my friend, too. He doesn't lie. There's some mistake. Ah, mistake come when soldiers shoot brave. I can't believe that soldiers did the shooting. Wolf had sea soldiers. Him find things soldiers drop after them shoot braves. Me send for Wolf had him tell you story. I want to hear it. But, Chief, I'd like to see Tawani first, if I may. Ah, him in wigwam of medicine, man. You go there. Tawani not see you. Him too sick. Maybe die. Oh, I, I'm sorry to hear that. Chief, I'll get the medical kit from my saddlebag. I may have medicine to help Tawani. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. When the weather's bad... Do you and your friends ever hang around the house wondering what to do? I'll bet it happens lots. 
Well, you know where you can have the most fun? In the kitchen, with a package of the new Betty Crocker Brownie Mix. That's right. It's easy as can be to bake up a big batch of luscious chocolatey brownies with Betty Crocker Brownie Mix. Everything you need is right in the package. Just add one egg if you like the chewy, fudgy kind of brownies. And two eggs if you want them soft and tender like cake. Add nuts, too, if you like. Either way, Betty Crocker brownies are the gee-I-can't-eat-them-fast-enough kind. Even if you've never baked before, you'll turn out scrumptious, chocolatey, perfect brownies the very first time. And what fun you and your gang will have eating brownies that you baked yourselves. Have Mom get Betty Crocker brownie mix next time she shops. Then invite your friends over for some fun. Now to continue. While the chief and wolf had watched, the Lone Ranger removed the bullet and treated the wound of the chief's son. Then when the young Indian seemed out of danger... The masked man went to the council tent with the chief and Wolfhead. He studied the army cap, canteen, and cartridge belt left by the attackers, while Wolfhead repeated the untrue story he had told the chief and finished. Me see soldier ride way in direction of fort. Me not know till me reach camp. Them shoot to Wani and other braves. Did they all wear caps like this one you found? Ah, them all wear cap like that. All but one. Loose cap you have in hand. That's strange, because no soldier at Fort Manning or any other cavalry post ever wore this type cap. Huh? That canteen belonged to a Confederate soldier. No soldier of the present army is permitted to carry one of them. You think me lie? I didn't say that. But you're wrong me if you say Me not wrong. That... Chief, this man not tell truth about cap or canteen. Him say that. Do you not get ready to fight soldier? Chief, you know that's not true. Him enemy. You make believe him try help Tawani get better. But him make Tawani die. You see, him give medicine, kill Tawani. I've had enough of talk like that. You stand back. Me kill you. My father. Drop it. Drop it. Get out. No. Me kill you. All right, you ask for this. Stop. I'll take his knife. Chief, I'm sorry I had to knock him out. You have to. Him try to kill you. He was angry because I tried to prove that the army didn't make the attack this morning. Any other brave might do the same. They're convinced that the soldiers are their enemy. You think Wolfhead lie when him say him see soldiers? Not necessarily. He might have seen men wearing the caps of foot soldiers. Since the war ended, many former soldiers owned them. I'll go to Fort Manning and report this. I'm sure the army will find the men who shot the soldiers. Now, speak the word to silence your war drums. Give me time to prove to you it would be a great mistake to make war on the soldiers. You bring proof soldiers, not shoot Indians. Please give me time to try. Ah, me give time. After the chief gave orders that temporarily suspended the preparations for war... The Lone Ranger rode back to the place where he had left Tonto to watch Ruth Barlow. Who's it? Who? He's just gonna be caught. Tonto, is Barlow still there? Ah, uh, him stay in same place. And Kimasabe, yes. look through glasses. Now man, join Ruth Barlow. For a moment, both the Lone Ranger and Tonto watched the men in the foothills through binoculars. Then the Lone Ranger said, Tonto, the man who joined Barlow is from Great Eagle Village. His name is Jim Wolfhead. Oh. Uh-huh. He's the one who convinced the chief that soldiers attacked the Indians. Him lie? I think so. I wonder if we could get close enough to Barlow and Wolfhead to hear what they're saying. There's plenty of brushwood near them. If we leave our horses here, we might be able to reach that brushwood without being discovered. It's worth trying. Exercising extreme caution, the masked man and Tonto approached to within a short distance of the place where Barlow and Wolfhead conferred. Then, lying flat on the ground inched forward through the brushwood as silently as possible. Presently, they were close enough to hear the traitorous Indian who had escaped from Great Eagle's camp saying, Roof, then mask man show canteen come from Confederate army. Ah, that stupid Alabama. He's the one who dropped it. 
I should have remembered he was in the Southern Army during the war. Why you not think Cap only used my foot soldier? I never give it a thought. You suspected Great Eagle had found out it was the wrong kind of Cap. Jim, what else did the masked man say or do? While the Lone Ranger and Tahoe listened, Jim Wolfhead told of the accusations he had made against the Lone Ranger and led up to his own knockout and the words he had heard the masked man speak as he regained consciousness. Masked man say him go to Fort Manning. Get soldier, find men who shoot. We can't let that happen, Jim. Where is that masked army still with Great Eagle? Him there when me leave. Now look, you told Great Eagle a masked man gave to one of your medicine that'd kill him. Huh? But Chief, not believe that. Oh, he'll believe it all right if Tawani dies before the masked man leaves the village. And if you get your engine pals to kill the masked man right then... No, oh, it big chance. Try kill Tawani. Starting this war was a big chance when the boss thought of it. But it can happen. Jim, if the boss doesn't get his war, you're not going to be getting any more gold or red eye from him. Mm. Neither am I. Oh, huh? Me not want to lose him. You will if you don't hurry back to the village and do away with Tawani. Now, go ahead. While you do, I'll ride down to the hideout and tell the boss and the gang what happened. The boss will be sore about it, but it's his fault, too. The Lone Ranger and Toto cautiously returned to their horses. The masked man, disturbed by the surprising conversation he had heard, said to Toto, so We must find that man they call the boss. And we must save Tawani from death. Ah. Me pana Barlow, the boss hideout. Good. I'll tell you all that happened earlier the next time we meet. Me hear enough? No, it's serious. Tonto, when you follow Barlow, leave a blaze trail behind you and wait near the hideout. I'll go to Great Eagle at once and tell him what we heard. The Lone Ranger, riding, reached the village many minutes before Wolfhead sneaked back walking. Wolfhead found a stone and hid it beneath a blanket which he pulled around himself. Then, avoiding the few braves who passed, he made his way to the medicine man's wigwam. Hearing no sound within, he entered the tent stealthily. He stood for a moment in the darkness, which was relieved only by a faint glow from the tallow-filled lamp which burned next to the blanket on which Tawani lay. Mandimo, the medicine man, had his back turned to Wolfhead as he bent over the chief's son, feeling the lad's forehead. Taking advantage of the moment, Wolfhead tiptoed through shadows until he reached the edge of the small circle of light. Then he suddenly leaped forward and brought the stone down on Wandimo's head. <laughs> now, me take care, Tawani. Wolfhead removed the blanket from around his shoulder and started to bring it down around the head of Tawani. Then a voice behind him spoke. Better not do that, Wolfhead. Mask man. Yes, and Chief Great Eagle. No. Snake of evil one, you die for this. No. You'll never kill me. I take him. No. Chief, I had to hit him again. I was nearest to him. Him get many times worse than blow when time for tribal punishment come. Let me see, my son. Ah. Evil head. Yes. Fire no longer there. See. Now him open eyes a little bit and smile. Oh, you make him better. Now I'm sure he'll recover. I'll look at the medicine man. He'll need a doctor also. And be all right. Him only knocked out. Oh, my head. He'll be all right, Landimo. Chief, will you help go after Barlow and the man I told you about? The one they call the boss? Ah, me help. You better take some of your braves with us. Me have tribe ready in a few minutes. But first, them arrest Wolfhead. You aren't going to kill him, are you? No, him get trial first. Now we're going to make him talk. Him tell us truth about everything or... Oh, it not take long. Then we go with you and follow Tondo's trail. Wolfhead, with tribal persuasion, told the truth. Then as they left the village with a lone ranger, Wolfhead rode with them. Monsieur! When Barlow reported the new developments, Oliver raged in anger, then gave instructions for the men to be ready for instant flight. He said, We'll wait two hours, and if Wolfhead is not returned, we'll leave. It was just about two hours later when Jim Wolfhead returned. Speaking low, he talked to Oliver and Barlow for two minutes. When he finished, the pair's faces were ashen. Then their eyes bulged as they looked toward the underbrush that surrounded the hideout on all sides. 
Indians, a dozen of them, emerged from the bushes, with Great Eagle and Tonto in the lead. Oliver spoke. Jim was seven hit the waters. You can see that he had reason for warning. You killers and scalpers. Not if you throw down your guns. Yeah, that's mine. You, Barlow, and you, boss, stay right where you are. The masked hombre. No Indian or masked man will ever take me alive. I'll kill myself first. Drop that gun. Oh, you... Boss, in your case, a bullet in the wrist is more painful than one in your brain. They want to keep you alive. Make an example of you and your country to all four nations with ideas of conquest. Uh, how do you know about our plan for conquest? Wolfhead's tribe made him tell all he knew. He gave the skeleton of your plot. I think we'll have the body of it before long. Oh, here come Great Eagle. Him take me back to village and trial. Oliver, if that's your true name, Great Eagle's not going to kill you. Nor will he kill you, Barlow, for trying to murder his son. Uh-huh. What's he going to do? His tribe will take you both to Fort Manning and turn you over to the army. That's right. Army know what to do with white spies like Injuns know what to do with Injun traders. Chief, there are some suitcases here that seem to belong to this man. Please take them and turn them over to Colonel McNaughton, too. Ah. Those are the records of all my plans, of all my agents in the United States, everything. I'm ruined. So is your country's reputation. Chief, we'll see these men to your camp. Ah, me glad Tonto make it easy for us to find them. I'm glad, too. Because now, instead of becoming enemies, as these men hoped, your tribe and the army will be closer friends than ever before. Good luck, Chief. We'll leave you now. Come on, Tonto. Uh, Adios. 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 Uh, they're great men. Him save my son's life twice. Save my people from making war. But who is he? Him man your country never forget. Him lone ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.